So welcome to the second session of the Women in Local Leadership series. Um, this is our second year doing this program. Um, it's the Chamber's uh, kind of opportunity and platform to elevate um, women leaders in our region. Um, this uh, today we have with us Representative Moschino. Um, so you'll hear from her shortly, but I just want to take a couple minutes um, to thank our sponsors for this program. Um, we have Mountain One Bank, Three Mentor Advisory, Hollywood Agency, and Brick Health. Uh, we are so fortunate to have your support for this program, and um, we thank you for, for that. Um, so I just wanted to quickly acknowledge them. And um, from, from there, I'll go ahead and introduce our moderator, who is Deirdre Savage. She's the Vice President of Government and Regulatory Affairs for Blue Cross Blue Shield, Mass. Um, she is also the Vice Chair of our Chamber Board, and we're very fortunate to have her leadership on our board. So um, with that, I'm just gonna turn it over to Deirdre. Deirdre will kick off the session, um, and I hope you all enjoy. Yeah, so you guys can hear me all right, right? Yeah. So um, as I've apologized multiple times, if you see somebody going behind me, that's um, our sprinklers getting turned on. Um, so um, timing is not what I chose. But so but really, you know, to kind of pick up on Courtney, thanks so much for everybody who's joined us today for our sponsors. Um, it's, you know, obviously the work of the chamber can't be done um, uh, without you. So we appreciate it. And even attendance uh, at, with these kinds of events, you know, we all wish it was in person. I'm desperate um, to get back to that. But, um, you know, I, I love that folks have shown up and are interested in, in hearing from uh, Representative Moschino. So, um, just to kind of move us through, um, I, I, you know, I, as, as Courtney mentioned, I'm uh, regulatory and, and government affairs with Blue Cross, which means I fly to Washington a lot. And whenever I fly out on a certain path going over kind of, which is down the South Shore off to the Cape and then down to DC, if we go that path, I always look down and say, you know what, this is literally probably the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful districts congressionally. But now when we talk about literally um, Representative Moschino's in the entire country, like I can't, I, I, I have that thought and I'll, Truth be told, I'm actually from New York originally. So um, I'm not even like some crazy like Massachusetts, but I just say like, what a beautiful place. So it's no surprise that Representative Moschino is strong on environmental issues. She's got Cohasset, she's got Hull, as we all know, Hingham, um, parts of Situate. So um, I know we value her perspective on those issues and her advocacy, whether it's through the state house or on the commissions that she's on as well. Um, important uh, committees for the South Shore, telecom utilities and, and energy. Um, I'm sure you'll talk at some level um, about some of your work there. Um, but, you know, I know we're not gonna be kind of so issue specific, although I do wanna say, again, your work on COVID opioid addiction has been really valuable. Um, and transportation infrastructure, which I, do think, you know, with what the feds are doing, kind of marrying the two things we do and what could be a big bill this year that'll matter for the South Shore, be interested in your thoughts there, but also really to talk about how you, you know, as this is a women's um, leadership forum, I think most of us here, I know for myself is, um, when I speak to younger folks about how did you end up doing this or whatever else, people think it's, you know, a straight line or whatever else, but oh. there's so many twists and turns. So we were talking about you being, in our breakout room, which you cut off, Courtney, um, about being a health lawyer, but you've done a lot of different, had a lot of different experiences in the law before public service. Um, and kind of, I'm interested in, you know, how those opportunities, not necessarily presented themselves literally, but how you thought about them mm -hmm. and kind of the challenges, like what you kind of weighed because they eventually are how you came to be where you are today. Um, and they shaped you, I'm sure. And I, I you know, I, I suspect similar experience in, in terms of that. Um, so I, um, but, you know, so I, I really, I just want to kind of turn it over for there. Thank you again for joining us and, um, you know, take it from there to for some opening remarks sure. and then we'll kind of, this is a conversation. It's sure. not a you know, lecture. So 
Thanks. Well, so first of all, th thank you for inviting me. Um, I was um, really excited to hear that, um, and, and not surprised at all that the chamber is um, doing a lot to elevate and to promote actively promote women, um, which is totally appropriate uh, and exciting to see because that's not always the case. Um, and so I am the state representative of Third Plymouth, which is Hingham Hall, Cohasset, um, and North Situate, which I really do believe is the most beautiful part of the state. Um, but I probably a little biased because I actually grew up in Hull and went to school here and <clears throat> graduated out of Hull High. Um, and so I am uh, just a little background for those of you who are meeting me for the first time. I am actually um, an attorney. So I went to Harvard, I graduated, <clears throat> uh, went to law school, and um, I started out as a criminal defense attorney. Um, I really loved the action and I thought I was going to do a lot of um, you know, criminal defense work. And um, we ended up moving to Texas. Um, my husband got a, is also an attorney. I'm the only one I know who went to law school and found true love. Um, and, but he got this great job and it was a really wonderful opportunity and I hadn't really secured something yet. So we moved down to Texas. And um, so I was um, volunteering actually with the public defender's office just to get experience and working with a small firm doing civil rights and um, criminal defense work and um, loving it. Um, but then John's job changed and that did bring us back to Boston. Um, and it's, it's at that moment we had been licensed, I think three years and whereas he could just come up and take the job, I actually had to take the bar again um, from Massachusetts because you know, we were licensed in Texas and then came up. And the first job I managed to get was in healthcare and it was, just, it was an interest. And so I was actually looking in that space. Um, and I went from being a criminal defense lawyer sort of in court action to being a transactional lawyer in, um, you know, in the healthcare space uh, at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. And, you know, it's one of those moments where sometimes life really intervenes. Um, and it's those moments where you get to, I think the trick of it is, is whether or not you sort of pause and think, what am I interested in? What do I like about the job I had? What do I, what am I interested in trying to segue? And um, as you know, dear to healthcare is, it, you know, especially right then at that, at that point, sort of like 97, 98, 2000, right? There's a lot going on around HIPAA. And it was just transformative time for healthcare. And so it was very interesting and engaging space to be in. And I got um, very interested in policy and I started, um, you know, I was taking a step back from the practice and looking at what, what, you know, policy influences. And I wish I had known then that there was jobs like yours. I totally would have, <laughs> I totally would have gone for that. Um, but I really started looking at that space and it just happened that at that time um, <clears throat> there was something going on locally in Hull and, um, and at, at, the, at the local level with our selectmen and uh, I thought I don't know much but I know I can do better than those guys mm -hmm. and so responsive to that um, very local issue I stepped forward to run and of course it's my hometown so even though we were only just had moved back um, people knew me very well and, and they knew I was a nice girl from a nice family. I was smart and that I would work hard and they, they put their faith in me, took a chance and I got elected and I loved it. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. Um, and I really haven't looked back and I really feel like it was the, the work as a local elected that sort of led me to take the nonprofit CEO job at Mass Appleseed. Um, and then it was the work there through that public interest law center um, <clears throat> that really, um, where I educated myself on what, um, you know, what it really meant to look for the opportunities that were ripe for systemic reform and how you make a difference um, for whole groups of people. Uh, the lawyers on the call will know that there's no, rep there's no substitute for that direct representation, but you can step back from it and think about public policy and how you, how you really elevate people and make things better for groups of people. Um, so then I think it was no surprise. Um, once I started thinking more sort of on that state level, uh, I don't think it was a surprise to anybody um, that, I, that I ran for a statewide office. Um, and I've, I've really loved it. Um, but I think it's interesting when you, when you run, um, we were just <clears throat> having that conversation um, with uh, Jennifer Pinkham, is when you run for state office, right? You know, you, you put yourself out there um, and you have to look back and sort of tell your story. And I would tell you my career path was kind of meandering, like I was following a cow around a you know, pasture. But when I 
turn back and I think about the experiences and the expertise and, you know, you know, the places you have an opportunity to really cut your teeth for leadership and, um, and, and the communications and things like that, you know, every step of the way, um, you know, I really felt like I was involved somewhere in whatever community I was doing, whether it's legal community, women's bar association, whatever. Um, and, you know, I really feel like every step of the way I was involved somewhere along the line. And those were the opportunities that I got to sort of not just do the work, but to put myself out there. And um, so now it makes a lot more sense. But I think along the way, it was kind of like, what should I do, you know, next? Um, and I think having mentors along the way and real role models um, have, you know, really just for me personally made a lot of a difference. So, yeah, so that's kind of how I sort of come to be here. <laughs> Well, and you're picking up on a thread, um, you know, a lot of people say that advice question, um, like, you know, if somebody wants to enter public service or, you know, just kind of whatever their field is, but you talked about mentors along the way or people to reach out to. So uh, clearly that's something you would say is an important aspect of, oh, yeah. um, you know, not only getting into positions where you can be, but then kind of modeling um, behavior or thinking about what they do right and what you would like to do. And is there, in addition to kind of addressing that, is there people that you look back on or people you observe, women in particular, that you kind of say, you know, like, I don't like what they're doing and they, and they don't have to be, you know, in government, they could be, you know, wherever you're kind of comfortable talking about, yeah. You know, it's funny. So going back when I was, <clears throat> we were first just married in Texas and um, my husband's boss was, was a woman, um, Jeannie Hansen. And she, she understood what I had given up. You know, I had given up a, a job potentially with the New Hampshire Public Defender's Office. And we moved to a place where there was no uh, we had no, no network, nothing. I mean, you go down there cold and to her credit, um, and I didn't even appreciate it at the time. I sort of clung to her, uh, because she's like, let me take you to the, the Dallas Bar Association. And mm. she introduced me around and she really, really taught me how to network. Cause I'm shy. I'm a shy person. I'm reserved by nature and, um, very private. And, <clears throat> and so that, was really, that was a hard thing for me um, to really put myself out there, especially, you know, at a point where I felt like I was, you know, it's a, so I was out of work for six months. I, you know, it felt like I was falling behind my peer group. It felt like I was missing yeah. out, you know, and until you get that Amplified. first job and yeah. right, until you get that first job in law, you know, you're not a real lawyer, you know, and it, it's yeah. all of those insecurities <laughs> that, um, yeah. that we all feel. Um, but she really, she took me around and she introduced me around and she was the, f the first woman who ever really promoted me. Um, and she, it was from Jeannie that I really understood that, you know, you follow a path that other women have trod, right? So like they have, they've worn that path, they've pushed it forward and the rest of us happily, you know, we happily go along and, you know, and get what we get based on our merits. Um, but now I feel like I've kind of come to the end of that and it's my responsibility to keep pushing, but you have yeah. to turn around yeah. and offer the hand up as well. And so I think about that moment a lot when she brought me around to these lunches and introduced me to these fantastic women. And of course they looked at me and they're like, oh, someone with free time. All right, kid, come here. You know, we want you to, and they put me on the board of the Dallas Women Lawyers. They, they asked me to do these things. And all of a sudden I'm presenting like CLEs and I was just like, and that's, you know, that's the moment where you, like you said, you watch other women, how they do it, you try it out yourself and you figure out what works for you and your style um, to be effective communicator. And, well, yeah, and I think out. putting right. yourself out there, I mean, that's kind of when you talk about not necessarily being the most extroverted person you know, right. it is difficult for different people based on whatever they kind of bring to the table, but putting yourself out there and kind of asking for that help. Um, we were just talking about somebody before you joined a young person that looks to get into kind of healthcare stuff. And, um, you know, sometimes just like just asking and, you know, realizing that people aren't always, and this was advice I had heard is like, 
most people are always just generally thinking about themselves until you make them think about you. And then they're more than willing. It's just, you know, and it's not some selfish thing. It's just life is like that. Um, Do you find that, um, you know, I I think there are, I'm not, um, how do I say this and be delicate? I'll say it about myself. I think times have changed from when I first became a lawyer and started doing things. And now, um, uh, you know, Blue Cross is 80% women. Um, and for a long time, I think it's even higher than that. For a long time, it wasn't always, um, you know, I, I'm lucky to say during my experience there, women have been in leadership for a good amount of that time. And and we, you know, we run the place for all intents and purposes now. Um, but um, don't say that to Andrew. He's wonderful um, and a big promoter of women. But I just say that um, I, you know, do you think of challenges? And I think, again, they have changed over time that are unique to women that you think, you know, or there's improvements that could be done or, or you know, when you, you're thinking about your own career path or those coming behind you, like, what do you, yeah. you know? So, you know, uh, I mean, there's a lot wrapped up in what you were just you know, really talking about, I mean, I, I feel like um, one of the biggest obstacles, um, you know, when, as far as women go is, uh, you know, there's still a lot of discrimination um, against women and, and it's, it's attitudes, right? So we have equality um, and we're working on, you know, the equity piece. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that um, men have instant credibility, um, and women really need to just work that much harder. I, you know, I think about over, over time, um, you know, how I am so careful to cultivate and curate my voice. Uh, you know, you, I'll just use the local boards as, um, a, as an example. I mean, so here I am, I'm, I'm a lawyer, I'm, I'm smart, I'm a local person, everyone knows, everyone knows me, right? It's not, I grew up here, right? Um, and and yet people um, were still trying to figure out how I related because I, I still have my, mar- I have my maiden name. Um, and because I was like, hey, I'm a licensed attorney. It never occurred to me to change my name, uh, but I'm a licensed attorney. I'm not changing my name at that point. It's too hard. Um, it's unnecessary. And, um, you know, people were like, so John, and I was like, that's my dad. That's my brother. They're trying to figure out which one's my husband. And I'm like, you, you know me. And, you know, it's like, why are you trying to think about who I am in relation to other men? And then of course the other piece, um, you know, is the voice, you know, so some women just were like, or uh, just a lot of people were like, you just talk too much. And I was like, don't talk too much. I don't talk enough. And, you know, so it's really, you, you have to pick those battles and, you know, as a lawyer, you know, we're all trained water off a duck's back, right? You just, you can't get me mad, right? It's just, it's not, it's just not going to happen. And, um, and so, but then consequently other people were telling me like, well, you're cold. And I was like, oh, sweet Jesus. And then, <laughs> the straw, you know, the straw that broke the, the camel's back is like when people started telling, you know, coming in, like, really love that pink suit of yours. And it's like, oh my God, they're paying attention to what yeah. I'm wearing, not what I'm saying. And yeah. so, so I, I feel like with being a woman, there's just, it's just this other level that you just have to deal with and there's no escaping it. You just have to find your own way. Um, and you know, I just, you know, you know what I mean? I just smile and I shrug it off and I keep moving. But, um, but once, you know, women belong at every table where big decisions are being made, end of discussion. And I, that's the big thing is you just have to figure out how to get yourself in that room and stay there. And then remember once you're there to bring other women in, right? It shouldn't be about, you know, she's got the one coveted woman seat, that bullshit. You know, men have run the world for yeah. how many, how many hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, so maybe women should run the world for the next hundreds and hundreds of years, you know? So Damn that's that. what I say. Yeah. But I know we're challenge. gonna yeah, and I know we're gonna throw some out to questions too, but you you said a couple things that stand out to me. One is what comes across very strongly to me, um, and I suspect to others, is um, just the, your authenticity. So it's kind of like you've reconciled all of that, 
and, you know, kind of, you know, which is a lot in the headspace and things like that and be like, this is who I am. Um, I'm not beyond kind of making my own improvements to that, which I do, you know, I, I do, I'm from New York. I talk with my hands so much. Sometimes I literally have to sit on them because it's distracting and I understand that, but you, you modify for different things, but it, what it prevails is an authenticity. Um, and I think that's so important. Um, so I, I think, you know, hearing your thoughts about that and whether you, you, you respond to that in others. And the other thing that you said that really, um, a thread of where you're going is finding your voice. And I think sometimes women who are um, kind of rising in leadership, mm -hmm. um, what I have observed is, um, and have been guilty of, so I don't wanna um, act like, you know, I, I'm just not actually, haven't done what I'm saying is not the right thing to do, which is um, it's not only it's it's not only trying to like get yourself in there, but it's also accepting the fact that you need to ask for things like raises, mm -hmm. you need to ask for things like promotions. And I don't know how many men in similar situations or, or positions like I have had have gotten other workloads and things like that. And literally will turn around and be like, all right, so what do I get for that? And meanwhile, I'm like, oh, you need me to do this? Okay, next. All right, what else do I need to do? And I just put it on the list, put it on the list. And it occurs to me, I'm like, when I, you know, I've heard, you know, there's been a couple instances where it's been like, oh, like, oh, that's not just what we do is just pile on and pile on and figure it out. And so it's that stopping back and being like, you know, you know, it's not quite what like, what would a man do? Because I, I hate being like that. That's yeah. not, but what would, you know, somebody that's not, you know, the, what is it that should be done here, regardless of who's doing it? And I just think, uh, um, you know, whether it's how we've grown up and different things where it's like, oh, you know, so you have to take that pause and it's icky and it's not comfortable, right. um, but it's something that a lot of other people have no problem doing. So I think just those two mm -hmm. things where it's like the authenticity factor, I think is something women just have to reconcile with and, you mm -hmm. know, um, be who they are. So just thoughts on that, yeah. Well, starting with that, I mean, <clears throat> just to back up, I'm not 55. This is probably what, uh, the fourth iteration of my career. Um, so, uh, you know, honestly, at this point, and, and I'm, I'm married, I have, I have a spouse, you know, um, who also works. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, I, I would, I would say that, um, you know, where I am right now, um, you know, I, I can, I'm very comfortable with myself. And that has not always been the case along the way. Um, but I would say that what I found along the way um, is that, you know, so public service has always been important to me um, and, and it has taken different shapes along the way. And for those of you who, you know, there are in companies, you might have like Blue Cross has great leadership opportunities, other companies or law firms, you know, they're just, they, they just don't, that's not how they're built. So they don't necessarily have it. So sometimes you do have to look externally yeah. for those opportunities and, and create them yourselves. And you shouldn't be shy about it. I mean, don't apologize for having ambition. Um, and I think it took me a long time to sort of get past that. I want to lead in this, right? And to say that, and I honestly can say when I think back, um, the things I regret are the places where I didn't step forward and say, no, no, I want to do that. Um, and those feel like the missed opportunities to me. Um, but I feel like one of the strategies um, to sort of getting sort of to where I am without, you know, just being that much older, um, you know, is, is to pick something you enjoy because then you're going yeah. to really bring it, right? Because let's face the facts, you know, you have, you all have families, right? You have your responsibilities for your job, your home. And whatever the else, sprinkler you, guy, the sprinkler guy, who is all set. Know? By the way, we are all set. So he um. needs, you know, he needs time and attention too. <laughs> um, and those are details. Like I, you know, I, I one of the, the the key things in my, I, I, you're gonna laugh at me, but like one of my aides was just like, "Well, who's Dirk?" And I was like, "That's the guy that cuts my hair. Do not mess with that appointment. <laughs> I, you, know, you need to look professional. I mean, not for nothing. It's like it's it's a piece of your work. And so I've approached work." in sort of that, the, and the staff that I have um, is, is how I build these things in and just say, oh, that's a piece of work, just own it. Don't try to make it something extra that was to your point. The other thing I think is having goals. 
Um, so when I, when you step forward, it doesn't matter if you run for the select board or if you are a library trustee or if you're the mom organizing the PTA, you know, bottle collection and, you know, it, those are all leadership positions and they are all important both to the community and to you. So first and foremost, value. But when you step forward in those roles, you have to have goals because otherwise there's just too much to distract. And then I think the other piece of it is if you're step forward in a leadership role, right? We all need, there's times we're worker bees and we need to contribute what we have to the whole. But the real thing about leadership is identifying who's on your team and who your resources are and then lifting them up to do it. Don't try to do it yourself. And I think like that, it just mm. took me so long too long to to realize I didn't have to do it all myself because I was like, then you're just exhausted. Um, and you know if you've picked something you enjoy, then you're going to be glad to do it, right? If your gut says someone said and you know someone says here, you know, do one more thing, dear, do one more thing. You know, sometimes you just have to say, yeah, that's not going to happen, right? And you know, sometimes you have to talk about like, all right, I'll take that on, but that means I'm not doing these other six things for you. Um, and, and so it's that swapping out. Um, and then what you're really doing is you're gaining experience to transition to the person that's delegating and sort of leading all of these things. And remember, you've got those goals. So that's how you keep on track. We just did um, a big, a huge climate bill in um, the mass yeah. legislature. Yeah. That, I should have that said that. My... I'm sorry. That was incredible. Oh, no. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. That That's my bill. That was yeah. the 2050 roadmap was my bill. The, yeah. And the, the pieces that made it into the larger bill ended up being the vehicle for the much larger bill, but it was the key components of decarbonization, net zero, things like that. Moving that bill within a session, um, right? Uh. So one session, I filed it and we actually got it passed, um, was really just, I can't even explain the amount of work it was. And I had very specific goals, right? There's a timeline, I know what my process is, I know what I have to do to achieve each piece of it. And then you're working the inside of the building, which you understand when I say that, Deirdre, but then there's also yeah. outside the building and it's public opinion, making sure people are interested. It's all of the, the groups that are advocating for it, managing a coalition, and then it's navigating the politics, small p, of inside the building. Yeah. Um, because sometimes it's just about getting people to pay attention and getting people invested. I mean, I feel like my job is um, how to, is an exercise in how to get people, other people interested enough in what I'm doing to take credit for it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's that kind of stuff, so. There's no shortage of that at the state house, the, the taking yeah. credit. <laughs> I think yeah. what I'm to say is, um, and I, this took me way too long to figure out too, is um, relationships really matter. Yeah. So you're talking about the authenticity um, you know, I, I think as a state rep, that what I need to communicate to people is um, that you can, I'm accessible, right? I'm friendly. You can actually call and swing by my office hours um, and that, you know, that I will try to help you. I, I mean, I can't solve every problem, but I will try to help you. I mean, that's the bread and butter of it. And so I, I feel a lot more, um, you know, I, I'm sure if you ask Elizabeth Warren this question, I'm not sure how she would feel about it, but I, I feel like part of what I need to do is communicate warmth that I am that you really can that I'm empathetic that I will try but make no mistake um you know I'm a hell of a good lawyer yeah and I'm coming I to get to no. yeah no problems being yeah. decisive and making decisions and I have no problems being forceful I am I can be Direct. very yeah. trust me I'm sure that um the speaker <laughs> recognizes how forceful I can be when I'm really pushing what I think is an important bill so and it's reconciling those things but do keep in mind I mean I'm, I'm 55 at this point yeah. in the game I'm pretty comfortable in my skin and I, I've just been chewed up and spit out so many times you know I, I know who I am and I know what I can handle yeah. and um you know I've, I have great I have confidence in myself on how I can handle myself so you know and it's you know, it just takes experience. You just got to put yourself out there to get to that point where, you know, if I lose my race, um, yes, I'll be crushed. I love this job, um, but I'll just go get a, another job as like a nonprofit CEO somewhere, you know, yeah. and probably make a lot more money, but you know, it yeah. just, so, you know, it's- It is that confidence though, I think, that. which is takes time. And I think yeah. Jackie Collins would agree heavily with one of the, um, and I will stop Courtney, um, with one of the 
items that you said that I think is really important and not just about um, uh, those that are, you know, women in, in that are kind of growing into leadership, but those of us that are um, leaders or have people that report to us or look to us for mentorship, which I think, you know, I'm looking a lot of head shaking on the call. A lot of us are in that position as well. And something you said specifically, which is goals um, and literally spending time like, you know, even if it's just listen, you know, you can anticipate in a couple of weeks, I'm going to uh, things are going to slow down for this reason. I'm literally going to spend a day just thinking about this and putting pen to paper and realizing you're not trying to solve world peace with the goals that you write down for that particular year that you need to come back to them. They're, they're not the same. Right. And I think you're right, because then you can at least look at the the opportunities that come to you and it'll force you to take action. So maybe you don't have that opportunity in your current job or you can't give the person that reports to you the opportunity for certain things. Well, they can go elsewhere, like i.e. the South Shore Chamber. Um, how about you direct them to get them involved in something that's a little bit outside, makes them a little uncomfortable and things like that, but that it's that you not only do it for yourself, but that you kind of force yourself to do it, especially for women that, again, may just kind of take it for granted um, mm -hmm. that like I'm just doing, 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 and then haven't stopped to kind of take that measure of themselves and yeah. what they actually want or like to your thing, like their passion. It doesn't have to be in the job that they have, um, but that'll make them better leaders exploring that. So I, I think that was a huge piece. And I know mm -hmm. Jackie okay. from her background is very much like, you should do this. Um, you should be, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it's just very much kind of that advising yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, all right. So Courtney, I'll stop. I think you, how do we? Um, okay, sure. Um, so thank you. Thank you both. Um, that was really, really, um, I don't know, touching for me personally, but um, Helpful, I think for the audience too. Um, this is very informal. So I just invite you to either, you can raise your hand, you can put a question in the chat, you can unmute your mic. Um, and we're just going to open the floor up for some questions from attendees. I see Renee is hers off and I, I've been very yeah. bad vice chair. So as vice well, chair, have. I should be speaking and introducing very much directly our chairwoman, no, Renee. I, I, so I, I, I know you know, but I'm like, oh, yeah, wow, yeah. I realized it way too late. So go on. And she was at, at the hospice house, and we had a great, great interchange there. Yeah, so yeah. Joan yeah, does great work. Um, so I, I, my question is, um, you know, much like yourself, um, well, not much like yourself, but the trajectory of my career was, you know, it, as a nurse and working with, you know, physicians and so on, um, never really feeling the stress of sort of, you know, do I meet the expectations of this world that I'm in with men? Because it was sort of like, you just sort of knew your role and you just went about your day, right? When I took the job as the CEO here, and reported to a board of directors and initially, I so had never been a CEO, right? I had been in management and leadership positions, but never the CEO, Report never reported to a board of directors. Mostly all men, N not anymore, mm -hmm. but at the time. And it was really, I was like, whoa, I need some help with this because it wasn't mm -hmm. in my world before, really, truly. And mm -hmm. um and I was like, okay, now I get it. I get what people are talking about. And it was really a challenge. So I did have a coach. I just was, you know, wondering if you've ever had a coach or if you've, if, and, and it, did you find that helpful if you did? Um, so yes, actually. Uh, and so first of all, um, thank you for all of your amazing work. Um, you know, so I am very familiar um, and have taken the tour and, uh, and just thank you for doing that because that's so important um, uh, to our community to have you there and have you present and congratulations on being the first time CEO. It's a lonely job. Um, it's a really lonely job. And when I was um, the nonprofit executive director, what I did was, um, you know, I did actually seek out a coach and I did it in two ways. I used to convene, there's um, a group of women um, CEOs in the nonprofit space in Boston and we were about in the same um, sort of, you know, budget range, sort of in that 500,000 to sort of like 1.2, sort of that size organization. Mm -hmm. And we used to meet for breakfast on a regular basis. And it was everything from, it was just a space where you could talk through like, you know, 
everything from like I have to or you know figure out how to like buy a copier, rent a copier. I don't know how to do that. Like everything from like little funny details to, you know, this is the first time I have to fire somebody, um, you know, and, and everything and be, how do we manage the board? And what I gleaned from that, so first of all, that community um, was that I did really, and I would benefit from a coach. And so I didn't get a one-on-one -on -one coach. Um, what I did was I went to the Commonwealth Institute, um, yep. which has um, regular nonprofit women um, CEO forums. And even though I haven't run the Appleseed Center for five years, even though now I'm technically, or not technically, I am the state rep and elected, I still participate in that professional forum um, on a regular basis. And it's one of the things on my calendar that is like, you know, a pretty much only thing that would it, I would allow to interfere with it, with it would be, um, you know, if the speaker asked to see me, like that's Or it. your hair, or your haircut. <laughs> or my haircut. Yes. I, I'm with right. the hair thing. Yep. <laughs> I think it's tremendously important yeah. um, because you know it's a place where you can. You know, everyone always says, "Well, what books do you read?" I don't. Read, I don't. That yeah. has never helped me. But the forum, having that mm -hmm. forum, both the informal sort of friends, um, but also the, um, but also that that more structured um, professional um, coaching piece has been tremendously helpful. Yeah, I really rec. If you can afford it, I really recommend it. Great. Yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you. We also have a question. I know we were talking during the breakout session, and as I mentioned to you, I had worked at the state house for five years back in the late '90s, early 2000s, and what I was struck by was the real inner politics that goes on in the building. And in order to get anything done, there's a whole process that happens inside the building. I just thought you were elected and then, you know, that's what happened. But working in there, you realize that there's a whole political system that happens inside the building. So how have you navigated that as a female? And has have other women in in the state house been supportive or have you found them to be not supportive? And how is the women's caucus formed now? And is that something that you're a part of? So I am a member of the Women's Caucus, and um, and I'm I'm actually volunteered to be on their board this year. Um, there's 62. Um, is it 62 women? I think it's 62 women um, are member are members now, and which uh, just is tremendous to have. You know that a third of the body to have that a third of the body is very significant. Um, you know, you're asking a really interesting question uh, because it is a male dominated space. I mean, you walk onto the floor of the house and it's, you know, it's just a sea of guys in dark suits and luckily they're great guys. Um, and I'm just going to go back to something I said earlier is it's the relationships that matter. And, you know, I watched the, the new representatives sort of all do it in different ways. Um, I sat I'm, I'm someone who walks into a space, sort of sits quietly, observes, and gets a feel for how things work. Um, and it's a, it is a building about relationships. And so I know, you know, there were a lot of expectations when um, Speaker Leo stepped down, and now we have um, Speaker Mariana, which is great for us on the South Shore to have South Shore guy there. Um, and, you know, people really looking to see what he did. Um, Speaker DeLeo had a lot of women around him, a lot of smart, savvy, great women, um, and so does um, Speaker Mariano. And so I think, like, if you look at it, I mean, the numbers are kind of overwhelming, right? Women are only a third in the whole, in both the chambers. Um, but when you really start to look to see who gets elevated, um, there's some fabulous women there, and um, they're not you know, they're not afraid to put women in strong leadership positions. Um, you know, we'll use South Shore, Claire Crone is a great example. She was mm. judiciary that, talk about a big boy committee, that's a big one. Um, and she handled it fantastic. I mean, she's just such another great sort of strong leader. I um, mean, now she's the majority leader and that, that's a big deal. Um, so I feel like the piece that, um, that I encounter in there isn't always about gender, it's about the fact that I'm new. And it's how mm. you really, how you break into that space um, and how you, um, how you establish that rapport and those relationships. And because at the end of the day, you know, I can have the chairman of House Ways and Means cell phone, but if he doesn't pick up the call, 
what difference does it make? And so yeah. it's really about the relationships in the building um, and being, you know, being someone who's a, who's a trusted resource, who's a worker, who's reliable, um, who they know. Um, and and I it can't be underestimated how important that piece is in that space. So yeah, it it's 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 um I'll just say government's not rocket science, but it sure isn't obvious either. And you know the the, the small p politics in the building, um, you know it's it's a it's an art form to try to navigate that, as you well know. But it really starts with you know, is, is the conversation we had is I do know Bill Gowan and he is a great guy and I do have his cell phone number. And if I do need to talk to him, I can, I have access and I can. And, and that's because he, I've met him and I've talked to him and he knows me and, um, and he knows, you know, that I'm, I'm real, the real deal. Right. And honestly, probably the best thing I did without kind of realizing it, but, um, cause I'm about the work, uh, is to pass that, that uh, roadmap bill. When that came to the floor, that that made me, you know, that elevated my profile um, because that was that was a big that's yeah, a heavy lift for someone as junior as me to move a piece of legislation within the same in the same that's transformative like that, and that it came became a vehicle. Um, you know, just that was a big deal. So now everyone knows who I am. So, but. Um, I think yeah. people don't realize that so many pieces of legislation get filed every legislative oh. session, thousands of bills, yeah. and, and that so few actually become law. So when right. one actually does pass, even That's one crazy. branch, it, it's just such an accomplishment. So congratulations yeah. on Thank that. You. And as a freshman rep or a young rep, I, I know that you guys are usually put in a, you know, in the basement or in the attic, and uh, you know, you don't get real <laughs> a lot of preferences in in, right. in your in your committee selections. And the like so it is certainly a struggle when you're yeah. first starting off to find and navigate your way um, I'm glad to hear though that gender didn't impact you navigating in the building that that's I think that's a positive thing yeah I think yeah you know, I think where gender comes in is um, you know I think people it's what I, what I was saying earlier is that you really have to be intentional about it um, because you know there's a way of informality that guys talk to each other and you know, it's mostly men that were in the state house, right? It's only just this past session that we cracked the third, you know, 33%, um, or maybe it might even be 31%, um, you know, and so there's, and there's a lot of old relationships and they're all guys. And so, you know, it does appear to have that gender component to it. And there's a way that men talk um, very, um, very social and what have you. And, hey, listen, I can hold my brown liquors. I can, you know, I can certainly go sit and in the back room and toss them back with the boys if I wanted to. And it's also about, you know, what your goals are in there and accomplishing, you know, things and what you ask for, right? You have to ask for things in that space. And um, so I actually asked the speaker to put me on telecom utility and energy again this session. Um, and that was really basically um, the big ask I made of him. You know, a lot of people go for things like chairs and vice chairs. And again, that's, there's a lot of politics in the building around, you know, and a lot of old friendships and things like that. But the other thing I, so everyone asked for chairs. What I asked for was a second staff person. And he, he said, yes. So I actually, as only going into my third year, I have a second staffer, which, for those of you who haven't been in the building, that's huge. That I, everyone was just like, he's like, he, they, he gave you a second staffer. I'm like, yeah. I was like, I was over the moon because I'm there to, I'm You're there. You're playing to, the long game. I'm playing like. the long game. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, and everything you said, uh, it's a great question, Jennifer. I, everything you said, I think resonates in a lot of other settings. The small mm -hmm. P politics, the navigation, all of that, I just think, um, you know, and, and kind of the, even your own tactics towards your own future goals. Right. The second staffer, the, you know, I'll ask for this, I'll build the resume of this committee to get the net, loving it. Yeah. So I just think and, it has application beyond, you know, right. just like a, yeah. So, yeah. And when, you know, and when other people sort of put their things on you, like a, a lot of people are like, wow, they didn't make you a vice chair or something. And I was like, well, I didn't ask. And, you know, you got to ask to get things right. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's just that basic. And, um, and you have to also position yourself, ladies, you have to position yourself for the ask. So, if, you know, that's when, when I say you go back to your goals, um, you know, you really have to think about it. And then the other piece is, 
if you ask and you're told you can't, um, you really can't um, worry about it. If someone says no, you just figure out another way to get it, right? Mm -hmm. Like what you want and what you're looking for. Um, you know, you have to be really strategic. And I think that's why, you know, having sort of basic goals tend to be, um, they're your touchstone, right? And sometimes the goals get modified and sometimes you change your mind. That's totally cool. But I think the other big piece is um, when I was younger, I used to take things so personally, be like, what did I do wrong? It's like, I didn't do anything wrong. Like didn't position myself for the ask. And so like, once you realize, you know, it's business and, but it's, it's about relationships and what you can yeah. position yourself to ask for. So, yeah. But you all know that. <laughs> sure. It's good though. To, it's, isn't it good though to sometimes say it again? Say it out loud. Yeah. Remind yourself. Yeah. Which is going back to the coach and sort of some of these informal forums that um, where you can kind of talk things through. And you're like, oh yeah, I knew that. What was I thinking? So yeah. All right. I'm going to open it up for one last question or comment, and then um, we'll wrap up for the morning. I know some people have called uh, a couple of nice comments in the in the oh, chat. Oh, look, I'm sorry, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> so yeah. just a, a couple nice comments and thanking you for your leadership speeches. So. Oh, very nice. Well, honestly, I should be the one to pause and say thank you to the chamber. Um, you know, I, I just I feel like the Chamber of Commerce, the South Shore Chamber, has been such a strong partner, um, not just to sort of the middle size and the bigger. Um, economic, you know, companies and economic developments, but also um, sort of our municipalities. And I just think of the work that, you know, Peter and you, Courtney, have been doing with us on transportation. I mean, honestly, um, you know, I don't think we would have really gotten the secretary's um, attention or uh, the board chair's attention um, from FMCB um, without, you know, Peter's, um, his relationships and, um, and the work the really great work that you guys do as the chamber um, really lends a lot, lent a lot of gravitas to the, yeah. the, the pieces that the legislators were putting forward and that the municipalities were really putting forward. Um, so I, I should just pause and say thank you for elevating all of um, you know the business community and quite frankly, even people like myself um, uh, and some of our local leaders. I have four fantastic board chairs Jen Constable, Mary Power, Diane Kennedy, Karen Canfield. I mean, my communities are just are just well led, and they are rocking. And um, and I just I feel like the South Shore Chamber is a great partner in all that economic development activity, and has been really a great partner to the legislative delegation, sort of elevating us and giving us real real gravitas when we ask for things. Great to hear. Great. Awesome. Oh. All right, well, um, I guess with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up for today. Again, thank you, Representative Moschino. Thank you, Deirdre, for moderating. Um, we um, you know, really appreciate both of your leadership in the region and in our work. Um, and we hope that the rest of you will um, kind of join us for the rest of the series. We did announce the final um, slate of speakers yesterday. So if you didn't see it in your email, please check. And otherwise, um, I hope you all have a great uh, weekend. Enjoy some of this beautiful weather coming our way. Yes. And um, thank you again for joining us. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks so much. Have a good day.